Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Uh, today uh, we're just going to do a simple pendant uh, or you could utilise it and make earrings or you know I don't know if this is going to go yet. I'm just winging it. Uh, so what I've got is some metallic clays. These, This is all we're going to use of each one. Uh, so I'll just show you the colours. I've got Primo in bronze. I've got Fimo Effect. And this is this one. Metallic Gold. And I've also got some Primo Gold, and that's Antique Gold. Um, and these are all the bits we're going to need. I don't want to make a huge pile of it and have lots left over. As you know, I don't like a lot of waste. So I'm just going to go and condition these and... Um, get them to one uh, zero on my pasta machine um, and then uh, I'll pop back and we'll run through what we're going to do with them. I'm thinking, um, I was looking at some traditional Japanese makumagane, you know, how they do it with metal, that's where the technique has come from and I was watching a really interesting video where they were doing uh, this metal work and I just thought how cool would it be if we had a go using metals uh, and make a similar to that we made the other day make some makumagane but just with metal coloured um, clays so hopefully it turns out all right <laughs> right guys I'll go and condition this I'll be back in a minute Okay guys, I've got my clay conditioned. I've actually done it, once it was conditioned, I've put it through on three. Um, so it's made it a bit thinner. And I'm just going to cut some squares out. They don't have to be perfect, obviously. Um, just for stacking. cut out as many as you can and then we'll put the scraps together and and uh, try and make another square out of them because uh, it doesn't have to be perfect two three and I'm just gonna stick these bits together like that make another square up with the scraps like so We could put these scrappy ones on the top or on the bottom. Um, doesn't really matter where they go as long as um,
them out. I'm going to use this as my bottom one. And then we're just going to make a stack. Let me just pop that bit there. There we go. And we'll give it a roll. Flip it. Go. And I'm just going to take my ball tool and push through. <laughs> we'll just get it oh, reduced back. rolled mine a little bit too thin it's taken a while to get it back And the pendant we're going to make uh, is going to be an oblong. So I'm just going to get this 
into the shape of the pendant and then there won't be much waste. <clears throat> on the ends. There we go. Sorted. I'm just going to let that rest for five minutes. Um, just so it's not too sticky. Uh, and then we'll come back and uh, start making a pendant. See you in a Hi guys, this is nice and rested now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a slither off the front um, and then take a piece for a pendant and I'm going to do some earrings as well um, to match so I'll just take a slither off the front and there's our pattern and I'll just take another piece now um, Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Once it's baked up, I think it's going to look fabulous. And then I'm just going to take another slither uh, to make some earrings, which might be easier said than done. I'll slice this back piece off. these through uh, on zero um, just to um, get them uh, a similar thickness. Okay guys they're on zero now. Excuse me. Um, I'll just get a scrap of paper and burnish them just so we've got a nice smooth surface because we're going to part bake these before we put them on the back end. And I want them to be lovely and smooth. side because uh, this is what I'm going to make my pendant out with out of and I'm just going to line it up with the lines on my desk because I haven't got um, a large enough rectangle cutter um, so I'm just going to use the lines on my desk top um, to make the pendant with. smooth that edge just so it doesn't look so sharp and then 
gently pick it up, pop it on a piece of paper, get off. Oh. There we go, so that's for the pendant. And then um, I'm thinking I'll use this. Um, I don't know how big to do the earrings because they're going to go on a, a black backing. I don't want them too big. Make sure your edges are smoothed out and there's nothing untoward going on. Right, we're going to pop them in the oven. Uh, I'm going to do a good um, 15 to 20 minutes just so that I know that they're okay to, to be handled. Uh, and we'll, while these are in the oven, we'll make the backing. See you in a minute. Hey guys, while that's cooking, I just thought I'd make some cabochons with the scraps. Uh, so I've just got a couple of moulds here. This is um, a Ludmilla, oh, I can't remember the name of the lady. She's a Russian lady. She has a, her own channel. Um, and I picked up one of her moulds and this is just one of a cheapy one that I got from um, Aliexpress right I'm gonna put it on fast forward um, but I just thought I'd may as well fill my time and make some little uh, cabochons uh, with the leftovers Okay guys, I've made three nice cabochons and I've just done half and half and I'll make some lentil beads out of these um, later on. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, these are baked now. Um, I've just given them um, a light buff 
uh, and made sure there's no sharp edges um, but because we'd got them really smooth before they were baked um, they're fine uh, so yeah now we're gonna lay them on some backing clay and cut them out I'll just take this off I'll just give it a little buff to make sure it's nice and smooth. There we go. So I'm, oh, I'm just going to use a bit of um, bakeable clay. I've got the black one. And just pop a little bit on the back. my hands. Don't want any black marks on it. <clears throat> and again I'm just going to pop a bit of stuff on the back just to make sure we've got a nice bond. have no black gunk on me. I'll just wipe that bit up. There. Right. What we're going to do, we're going to cut these out, but we're going to leave a border around them. Um, so I'm just going to divide them up. Do that one in a sec. Oh, oh no, I've tore it. Oh, heck, that'll teach me for rushing. So this is going to be the top, so we want that flush. Luckily I've got away with that. And then we're going to put a little border all the way around. Um, I'm just going to have to bring it a bit closer because I can't quite see what I'm doing. There we go.
and you don't have to leave a board around. I just thought it would um, just add to the piece. Just going to make sure that's well and truly stuck down. Just take another slither off this edge, that's better. Uh, just bring a scrap of paper in. Make sure my edges are smooth. I can always catch on with a file later, but it's, uh, it's easier if you uh, can do it now. So again, this is going to be the top. So I'm going to keep that close because we're going to put a, a bale on top and then just leave a nice little border around the outside. Like so. Make sure that's Nice and bonny. And pop that on my paper. And last one. Again, just going to give it a little squish and a wiggle to make sure it's okay. Um, oh, well that's decided where my top is, isn't it? Just be careful when you're picking it up. So I've done this clay on um, on a three because I didn't want the pendant to be too too thick. So that's my top. Earring. I know I'm just going to pop these back in um, just to part bake and then uh, we'll do the bale while we're waiting. Hey guys, right, so we're part baked now. And this is going to be the top of our pendant where we left the flat bit. Uh, I'm just going to, there's just a little rough bit on here, so I'm just going to smooth it off now because once the bale's on, I'll not get a chance to do that. There, that's gone. I'll just get rid of that dust. There we go. Right, now we're going to make the bales for these. What we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of clay down and then we're going to fold the top over onto this to make the bale for the necklace. Similar with these, but the bit that's folded over, um, we're going to just gently press it together and we'll drill a hole in to put a, a bale in. Right, so I've got two pieces here. Um, I'll just do the necklace first. And again, I'm lining up with the uh, line on my glass mat, just so I know that it's nice and straight. I don't want it looking wonky. And there's my... So I'm just going to cut that top off straight first. And I want it 
to maybe come just under halfway down um, and then I need some for the bale so if I do that and then I cut there that should be plenty and I want it to be quite narrow so I'm doing it about half an inch again lining up with the lines on my desk and I've just got one of those little textured rollers here so I'm just going to put a bit of texture in it I think I do it both ways just for a bit of interest I just tidy my edges up if they've gone a bit skew with with the roller. I could have rolled it first really, couldn't I? I'll remember that on the next bit. Just again, making sure everything's nice and neat. And then we'll pick this up. You can just see a little bit of a Check you've not got any little bits on and then very carefully I'm going to pop a teensy bit of black stuff on the back just to ensure that I've got a decent adhesion And I'll just pop a little bit up there for when the uh, bale closes over. Again, I don't want too much on. Just enough for what we're doing. Right, so what I'm going to do is, like I showed you, in my bail video, if you haven't seen the bail video, I'll pop a little doodah up in the corner. A little card thing up in the corner. But just very, very gently start to massage this round into a loop. Can you see? So we made, if I do it that way, we've made a P. And then we're going to pop, don't forget your top bits flat, so we're going to pop this then. So we'll just put a tiny dab of clay there. We're going to pop this now on the top of here, like so. Make sure everything's nice and square, nice and tidy. I'll just pop it down a sec while I make sure everything's lined up. A gentle press, gentle press. I'm just gonna make sure that that's nice and straight and that I'm happy with it and everything's pressed nicely and I'll pop this on a piece of paper ready to do the final bake and we'll do the earrings Right, for the earrings, we're just going to do the same sort of thing, uh, but just with a, a slender strip. Uh, but instead of, um, I'll just show you on this scrap piece, instead of um, making a loop, because it'll be too big, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the end and really gently 
so we don't crack just let it warm up in your fingers and bounce and that's how we're going to do the bit in the top of the earrings so again I'll just judge about halfway down which I think that'll probably work nicely again make sure everything's lined up and what I will do before I uh, cut this in half um, I'll just roll my roller over it and just put a nice little pattern into it just make sure those edges haven't gone skew with and now I'm just going to cut this in half one for each earring Probably do that a little bit thinner maybe I'm just going to trim a tiny bit more off uh, not a great deal just to get it a little bit slimmer I'll just line that up again yeah so it's kind of a uh, quarter of an inch I'd say going off the blocks on my desk I'll just pop this one down and line it up. Oh, got a cat hair. There we go. I think it'll look better, a bit skinnier. Right. So now we're just going to pop a teensy bit of this on I'm going to take the end and just very very gently because we don't want it to crack our clay just force it over like so then obviously we've got the top of our earring and we're just gonna pop that onto oh onto there like so and again I'm just gonna go in with my blade oh wrong way up just make sure it's straight that I'm happy with the position and that it's bonded you can see it's bonded really well I just push that top bit down so that's one earring done I'll pop that on my paper and then we'll take our other one again Oops, that's a bit much, I think. Bit of liquid clay on the back. Again, if you've not got black, guys, you could use your translucent or your uh, clear. Or, you know, whatever it is that you use. And I'm just, again, really, really, really gently getting that to turn over the top so that we've got something to attach a jump ring to again flat top place that on make sure I'm happy with the position give it a little press Make sure it's nice and straight. Press 
down on the top and we're done. I'll just uh, finish baking these off now. Um, I'll probably do um, half an hour to 40 minutes just to make sure that everything's nice and bonny and bonded and uh, we'll come back and uh, string them up and um, have a look at the other cabochons that I've made. Hi guys, the bales are done now. As you can see, they look lovely, but just one final step to bring out the uh, shine on the metallics is I'm just going to pop a bit of UV resin on with a brush, uh, just a really light coat because um, it really makes the metallics pop. I've damped my brush with a bit of acetone and I'm just going to very carefully go around. Uh, don't forget you can, you know, use your favourite varnish. You don't have to use resin. I just find it easier. And it's pretty instant, isn't it? Because you can just stick it in your lamp. Uh, I'll probably do two thin coats. I don't know, I've got a decent surface. Give that a flash. Make sure there's no bubbles. Right, I'll just show you that one. There's no point me showing you them all. I'll get these done and then we'll put the bales on. Back in a sec. Hi guys. Right, we're all resined and as you can see, it looks so lovely. Not sure if you can pick up the metallic on this, but it looks amazing. If I say so myself, that is. Right, I've got some good metal earring hooks. And what I've done is, this is normally twisted the other way around. I've just got my pliers and twisted it so it's going the right way for me with my pendant. I've also got a couple of gunmetal um, jump rings and I'm just going to use my uh, ribbon and cord for the um, necklace. So first we're just going to drill holes into our... earring i have to put it down because I can't uh, see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I'm starting off with quite a fine drill bit. Sorry about the noise in the background. I've got the door open because it's so warm in here today. I'm hoping my jump rings are going to be big enough to um, I'll just go through the other side so that it's nice and neat. Where's my little buffer gone? Just take that bit off. That one wasn't very straight, was it? Let's do it from the front. Yeah, hub is uh, my studio's um, in a in a building out the back of the house in the back garden, and hubby has a little studio set up in the garage, 
um, he does a lot of woodworking and stuff so that noise you can hear in the background is him doing his woodworking let's see if this hole's big enough for this oh and we've just got a cat joining us hello colin you're gonna have to get down mate to make my hole bigger it won't go through I'll just go up to my next size Colin oh he's such a pest hey guys sorry I had to stop recording because the stupid cat has decided he wants to sit on the desk Colin look who's this Right, you need to get down now. Oh, go on, fat salt. Right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Holes. I'm just going to make this hole a bit bigger because the jump ring won't go through. And this one. Let's try again. And the cat's back, so if he makes an appearance, I'm sorry. Let's pop this jump ring in. Colin, you can't help me, darling. I'm just in the middle of something. Oh, it's been a bit pesky, this. Let's try from the back. Got it. Put my ear wire on the right way this time. Colin. Oh, for God's sake, cat. I can't see what I'm doing. Colin. What are you doing? Thank you. Sorry, the cat keeps jumping up. I'm going to have to put him out if he always decided he's going to lie behind me. That's all right. I'll just give that a wiggle. Oh, that's one. I haven't got many of these black. Uh, jump rings so I think I need to put an order in for some more some bigger ones there we go bit. Where's me your wire? Pop that on. Give it a little wiggle. So we've got two earrings and here's the pendant and I'm hoping that this will fit through. If not, I'm going to have to just put it on a chain. Come on, you know you want to. No, it's not going to go. Right, I'll just have to uh, find a cord or a chain for this. Piece. Um, 
I'll probably just put a, a thin black cord through it. Um, I'll just pass this through, then you can then you can at least see something strung on it. So yeah, I'll just um, make myself something up with a smaller lobster clasp on the end for that. I've got some nice earrings. I think I might pop a little, um, pop another one of these little beads there just to finish it off. Um, but there we go, guys. That's the pendant and the earrings. And these are what I made with the scraps. These haven't been varnished or anything yet. So I made a lentil bead and then flattened it. A little cabochon. Another little cabochon. And then these two I resined um, while I was resining the other stuff. So you can see the difference in the metallic with the resin on. It's beautiful. Um, so there we go. Another video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.